Today we gather on the National Day of Prayer to intercede for our nation in all of the areas of life that it contains. This 69th National Day of Prayer was started in 1952 when people felt it necessary to come together as Christians in our country and to come before the Lord and ask for His blessing. Today's National Day of Prayer is a bit different from other years in that it has to be done virtually. And certainly there's no better time than the present to pray for our country as we are in the midst of the coronavirus. In this service, we will be reading some scripture and praying for six different areas of our country's life. And we invite you to join us and also to view the National Day of Prayer service that will be streamed on the National Day of Prayer website or on Gold Star TV or God TV or Brio TV or NLT or Daystar. All of these outlets will be uh, showing uh, the National Day of Prayer service from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. And so we invite you to view that service at those times. And now let us remember what Habakkuk 2.14 tells us. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Let us pray that God would be glorified in our country and that he would draw all men and women, boys and girls, to himself. Amen. Now I'd like to lead us in our pledges to the, the flag of our country as well as the Christian flag. First, our pledge of allegiance to the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the pledge to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. Amen. I'm leading us in prayer for entertainment and media. And I'm going to read a text of scripture, then we'll have a time of silence, and then I'll lead us uh, through prayer for these uh, areas of our society. Psalm 101, verses 3 through 4 read as follows. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. Let's now have a time of silence, and then I'll lead. Let's pray. Most great and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our society that we can have the uh, influence of media and journalism and entertainment. And we thank you for these things that uh, some are recreation, uh, some are just merely means of keeping us informed of what is happening in our nation and around the world. Yet, Lord, we know how these things can form our worldview. And today we take a moment and we pray, Lord, for our nation and for ourselves that our worldview would be formed in an ever more positive way in our minds and in our thoughts. So we pray, Lord, for those who are involved with theater and those who are involved with movies and those who are involved with music. And we pray, Lord, that they would see uh, the importance of being responsible in how they act and what they share. We pray that you would lift up respect in each of these uh, branches of entertainment. We pray that people will be uplifted from what it is that they see rather than brought low. We pray that the representation of women as well as races, as well as those who are vulnerable also, Lord, would be uh, those that would be positive and encouraging 
uh, rather than degrading. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, remove things such as pornography as well as profanity from what we view and from what we hear as a nation. We pray, Lord, uh, against the advancement of violence and immorality of all kinds within our media and entertainment. Lord, give us a heart that uh, looks to faithfulness between man and woman. Faithfulness between husband and wife. And we pray especially for the protection of the vulnerable. For children, Lord, will you please look after them. And as we pray for the media, Lord, and for news and journalism, we pray that they too would give an accurate accounting as they report the daily and weekly news to us. Help them to represent truth. We pray that they would be accurate. Keep them from political bias. And end, Lord, in our land, fake news that stirs people up and riles us up unnecessarily. Lord, we do pray for your protection on these areas of our society, as well as the renewal of them. And even as we pray this day, Lord, we ask for your spirit to touch the hearts of those involved with each of these means of communication. Bring them to yourself, Lord. And we pray that uh, there might be a revival in the midst of these uh, types of communication this day. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I'm Pastor Julian, and I'm here to pray for the family. Let us take a look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, which says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And also Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, right now we lift up to you the family, the family unit which you begun when you took Adam's rib and made woman, and the two became one, and then they had children. Lord, we pray that you lay a special blessing upon the special, special family unit. It's essential in our civilization, in our society. Lord, we pray that you nurture it, watch over it, protect it. Father, we pray for, for, for marriage, for husbands and wives, and their love for one another. That though not everything may be the same from beginning to end of the marriage, that through all the ups and downs that they might have together, that husbands and wives will grow in love for one another and that their loyalty and bond to one another will increase. Lord, I pray that, that spouses, husbands and wives will take their vows seriously and follow through with them. And that you truly will be in the midst of them, holding them together. Lord, I pray for children, that they will honor and obey their fathers and their mothers, who are trying to rear them, educate them, teach them about life, teach them discipline. I pray, Lord, that that they will truly honor and love and obey their fathers and mothers. Lord, I pray for parents, moms and dads, and all the challenges that come along with that. 
especially right now in the midst of a pandemic and quarantine. I pray, Lord, that you give parents the patience that they need in that they're not getting any break from their children, which they might normally do. I pray that they're patient with them, that whenever any kind of aggravation bubbles up, that they're able to snuff that out. And for those parents who are doing uh, schooling from home, that you will also give them patience as they are now also their children's school teacher. Lord, I pray that, um, that you will carry parents through all of the challenges that go along with being a parent. And that they will teach them about your son Jesus Christ and his wonderful salvation and your story. And that children around this world will increase in number living their lives for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be praying for our educational system and our colleges and universities. Reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. I turn my heart to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the scheme of all things. Let us pray. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to live in a land where education is so important and whether it be in our high schools, elementary schools, our trade schools, our colleges and universities, you've blessed us with uh, a society that values education and we thank you for it. Today we want to lift up in prayer our public school system and our teachers and students and administrators and we pray Lord that you would um, help them all to do uh, their jobs and to fulfill their roles uh, to the best of their abilities. We pray for the students who come to school each and every day uh, Lord, but now are studying at home online, finishing out their school year. We pray, God, that you would bless our school systems and bless our students, that they would love to learn, that they would know that there's value in learning, and that, Lord, that you would prepare them for their careers, but also that you would mold and shape them morally, that, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts, and that in in, in a, acquiring knowledge that they would also get wisdom and we know that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord so bless our students Lord from young to old we also pray for our teachers those that plan lessons and carry out uh, programs and even coaches and advisors of sorts and teacher's aides, we pray that you would bless each one of them, Lord, that they would not grow weary in doing good, that they would do their jobs and fulfill their roles and that they would um, be encouraged in them, help them to love what they do. And Lord, also uh, guide them. Let them know, Lord, that uh, they hold tremendous places of influence. And so, Lord, help them to walk in fear and respect. And Lord, help them to know who you are and bless them, we pray. Bless also um, our administrators, principals and vice principals, superintendents and school board members. That Lord, that you would um, bless them in their roles and that you would guide them and give them wisdom as they lead our school systems. We also pray for our private schools, and especially those that are faith-based. That Lord, that you would... Bless the teachers and administrators there as well as the students. We pray for our schools and their protection. Lord, we know that in years past, um, we've had the awful plague of gun violence in our school systems. We pray for your protection to be upon our schools. And that, Lord, that uh, there would not be another uh, shooting. We pray that your protection would be upon 
the schools in our land. We also pray for our colleges and universities and our trade schools. We pray, God, that um, the students would come and would uh, want to learn and that you would uh, also be with their professors, uh, that, Lord, that they would um, seek to teach uh, and to mold in the shape in, in a right way um, and that you would use them for your glory. Uh, Lord, prepare our young people for future careers. And Lord, uh, may our colleges and universities not be a place, Lord, where um, they're a, um, a bastion of, of immorality, but rather, God, may they be a place of learning and growth, uh, of respect. And we pray that your will would be done. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunities that we have in this country to learn and to acquire knowledge and to gain career. Lord, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We're now going to take a moment and pray for the church, not only the church locally, but the church worldwide. So please join, us, uh, join me in silence, and then as I lead in prayer, let's pray. We thank you, our Father, that you have called your church into being, and that you have called it into being as a result of people placing their faith and trust in you, as Peter did so many years ago when he said that uh, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And then you responded by saying, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall never, ever prevail against it. Father, we thank you for this confession of Peter. And we thank you for the ways that you have built your church worldwide. We praise you that we can be a part of this local body of believers built on the very same faith and confession that Peter had many years ago. We pray that you would build up in us ever greater faith so that we might proclaim your name, not only here in this building, but also to the very ends of the earth. And as we do, Lord, we pray that you would build love and service in our community. Help us to look after each other. Help us to care for each other. Help us to look after people's weaknesses that come in contact with this, our church, we pray. And as we think of this church, we also turn to the church worldwide, thinking of the need for your church worldwide to have faith and to be strong in this time of pandemic. Lord, will you protect your church? Look after the health of each one. And strengthen the church to be able to proclaim and care for others at this time. We think of brothers and sisters struggling in special ways at this moment, dealing with things such as persecution or famine. And we pray, Lord, that you would especially look after the church that's persecuted in North Korea and in Afghanistan and Uzbekistan and Iran and Iraq and Somalia and Sudan and India and Pakistan and the Central African Republic. Oh, Lord, Please take care of our brothers and sisters there this day and give them the faith that they need to stand strong and be faithful to you. We pray, Lord, that you would also reach out to this, your world, that does not know that your Son provides salvation from sin and power for living and hope for eternity. Lord, we pray that your good message will go out to the one-third of this world who still does not know that Jesus saves. Send your missionaries out, Lord. Send your preachers out. Send your evangelists out so that the world indeed might know. And we also ask that you would raise up clergy, faithful people to share your word among those who have placed faith and trust in you. Help each one to be faithful who is set in an oversight position. 
We pray also that clergy, pastors, and teachers would also care. That they would care for the, from the heart for each one to whom they minister. Lord, please raise up more to go out into your field that is still ripe for harvest. And will remember to praise and thank you as you draw many to your Son. We ask this today in Christ's name. Amen. And now we pray for our government. Let us take a look at what 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 says. First of all then, I urge that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we trust in you. We put all of our trust in you. And Lord, I pray that we act upon that trust. That we act upon that trust in that the government structure that you set up here in the United States is your doing. And that you are in control. Lord, you've established it. And Lord, we pray and trust in you. And that is why we must, we must follow the laws of this country and the wishes of the politicians that, you've, that we have elected to those spots. Lord, we pray that we are good citizens, following everything that we're supposed to follow, with only the exception of when a law is contradictory to you. We think of the laws regard, regarding abortion. And Lord, that we stand up against such things. Father, we pray right now for our President Donald Trump. And for our Vice President Mike Pence. Father, it must be extremely difficult to be in that position and responsible for the well-being and welfare of over 300 million people. Father, I pray that you will guide the president in his decision making and that, that truly he consults you and that you are upon his heart in all of his decisions. And bless the vice president as he works diligently with the president. We pray that you bless all of the President's cabinet. We pray that you bless all of the lawmakers in the House of Representatives and the Senate. We pray, Lord, that you bless the Coronavirus Task Force. Father, we pray that all of the information getting out there that needs to be brought out and given to our leaders is, is made available and and that that information is able to be properly acted upon. Lord, we pray for our uh, state representatives and our governor and our local government officials. And we ask, Lord, that you guide our governor as, uh, and the governors of this great country as they make decisions with regards to quarantine, shelter at home orders, essential businesses, when to open up economies in certain areas. This is all very difficult, Lord, and we pray that the decisions that they make are in the best interest of the people and are according to your will. Father, we pray for a safe and effective treatment to the COVID-19 virus. We pray, Lord, that, that something is made available very soon 
so the businesses can go back to operating as they did before and that we can meet together in person again soon without the concern of of, a, of an awful, awful virus. Lord, we pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we lift up our government to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'd like to pray for our military. And I'd like to read from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Backing up to verse 16. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Let's pray for our military. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you for our military. Uh, the men and women that seek to protect our country and to fight for our freedoms. We thank you, Lord, for uh, those in the army, those in the navy, those in the air force and the coast guard and the marines. Those that have chosen to take time out of their lives um, to spend time um, serving our country both domestically and abroad and we pray Lord for their protection we pray Lord for um, their proficiency and that you would Lord bless them we pray especially for those personnel who are deployed they're separated from their families uh, they are overseas while their families are, are here in the United States and they've not been able to see their spouses or their children for months at a time. We pray, God, that you would um, encourage them, strengthen them, help them. And we pray that uh, you would bring them back safely. We also pray for our uh, military's leadership, knowing, Lord, that um, they are in position of great influence and they need your wisdom and your guidance. We pray, Lord, for the President's Cabinet. And um, we pray, God, that you would help them to understand um, good and proper decisions. Lord, we pray for the protection of our country. We know we live in a time where uh, there's always the threat of war. And war means many different things today. There's biological warfare. There's uh, nuclear warfare. There's chemical warfare. We pray that you would protect our country, both uh, from the outside and also within, from terrorists who would seek to uh, shed innocent blood, and uh, outside forces that would uh, seek to see our country come to ruin. We pray that you would protect our country and keep it safe. Lord, we thank you that uh, we live in the land of the free, in the home of the brave. So bless our country, Lord, and may we bless you, and may we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.
We're glad that you've joined us for this prayer service. Please be assured that as we have prayed in sincerity and truth, our Savior has heard us and that he is willing to answer. And now take comfort in this, the benediction for all of us from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever and ever. Amen. And go in peace.